Good, after, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 186, Computer Graphics um, with uh, Adobe Illustrator for the spring semester 2022. Um, today, we're going to be continuing sh showing you how to approach the mask assignment. I'll talk about making and editing shapes a little bit, and that will be it for today. Um, a question that has arisen is that when are the lessons due? I think it's good practice to complete them um, as we're in the, as, as I'm doing them. Or if you look in the modules, they're typically, there is at least in the first few weeks, there are more due um, or a couple of due each week, but then it tapers off into one is due each week. But if you can kind of keep up with me, or you can look at modules and see when they're due, that would be ideal. Technically, though, they really aren't, there is no exact due date for the lessons, except for, <clears throat> there, I mean, there is, it's the end of the semester is when they have to be in. The last regular week of class, not finals, but the last regular week of class. So that's the end of the 17th week. And that's when I go in into Google Drive, <clears throat> Or your share, shared folder, and I look and I count to see what lessons you've completed. And then if you've done all the lessons, one through 14 or whatever it is that we've decided this semester, um, you get a full 10 points, full credit. Um, and I will also be doing a midterm, um, a checkup too, to see how you're doing. And I'll probably give you a temporary grade or some feedback on that as well. Okay, so does that answer your question about when um, lessons are due? Assignments is a little bit different. Um, I think, you know, again, if you turn some in at the very end, that's fine, but I will probably grade them a little bit more harshly, um, expect a bit more from them. The lessons are a bit different. Um, I have due dates for the assignments. And if you look in modules, I have due dates for the, um, the lessons as well, just the last day of the semester. Yeah, if you haven't started the mask yet, then work on the lessons first. Okay. Um, yeah, work on the lessons. And then when you feel comfortable starting the mask, then do so. You might be uh, doing a Google search though in the interim and, um, even though you may not feel comfortable doing it, you may start looking for different kinds of masks. They're theater masks, they're cultural masks. If you have experience drawing, you may wanna draw your own mask. <clears throat> and that sort of leads me into what I'm gonna start with today with this mask assignment. Okay. Yeah, you're not expected to start right away, but um, on the mask assignment, but I wanted to give you sort of a heads up into different ways of approaching it. So um, where we left off on Tuesday is that I showed you based on uh, an image that I found off the internet. Um, I used it in the background. So I'm turning all these off and you can see that I have down here a template layer. So you can have multiple template layers, but it really, it's designed for you to use one. It by default is locked, it does not print. Um, you can make copies of it, you can turn it off and that's what I've done. Okay, so if I double click on the layer, whoops, come on, double click on the layer. Um, you can see that it is a template layer. You can always turn it off and make it an actual layer that you can use in addition to the drawings that you have, have made. Um, but I'm gonna leave it um, as a, a template for right now. Now I have made copies of it and I wanna show you what you can do with it. I showed you um, on Tuesday how to start building your illustration by working from the back and then building forward. Now, what I haven't done are the detailed beads. And that can be done any number of ways. So I want you to watch a few more lessons. It's similar to, well, what I did up here at the top. Um, I think it was 
this one. Nope, hold on. That one right there. So in lieu of beads, maybe you can do something different. You can fill, you know, make separate shapes, fill them with interesting patterns. You can use, if you want, the um, uh, the blend tool as I've done here. And again, it doesn't have to be the same shape. They can be different shapes, different um, uh, that you blend together. So maybe I can show you that on another day. But what I wanted to start with today is I wanted to turn off all of these, this drawing layer. And I wanted to go back to a copy of, let's go ahead and turn it on, of, um, I'm not gonna lock it, of the image that I downloaded. Now, geometrically, it, or, or from a design point of view, initially the shapes are very simple. Um, you know, they're basic geometric shapes, circles, ellipses, triangles, um, rectangles, that sort of thing. What makes this really interesting and intricate though, are the patterns inside. So that's something that you might want to think about doing if you do something like this. Is that um, it also that adds complexity to your design. It also adds uh, contrast or cult, uh, texture to your image. And that's off oftentimes what patterns will do. Um, what I'm gonna show you now, um, in some ways I hesitate to show you, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and select this shape right here. And when I do, you'll notice at the very top, we have, it, it changes the options menu. And if you don't, if that's not visible for you, then what you wanna do is make sure that over, let's see, here, the last button here is just Essentials Classic. Make sure that that shows up. And then you'll see that for Image Trace. I also want to go up to um, View. And I'm going to look at the Detailed Image Trace um, window as well, and uh, our panel. So let me see where it is here. Perspective. Uh, let me deselect this for the time being, and let's go back again and look at view. Um, I want image trace up here. Come on, come on, come on. Where are you? Maybe it's under window instead. There we go. That's it. Wrong, tat, wrong panel or wrong menu. Image trace. Boom. It's under all of these panels are available, <clears throat> and they're found. Um, under window. So if you don't see the one that you want, um, then go to the window menu and um, check it out. And the ones that are checked have check marks next to them are the ones that are visible and the ones that don't aren't. And if you want to see what they look like, then you just select them. So I have image trace here. This is what I want to see, this panel. And next I want to go ahead and I want to select the image. And up here, it gives me an option here. I'm going to go ahead and go to image trace. Now we can use the default settings here. And I'm just going to do that. Let's use the default, for example. And it changes it to black and white. Now that's by itself, I don't think that's adequate to turn in, but it's kind of cool. That might be one layer that you use in addition to others. But in the meantime, I want to show you what some of the other options are for you. Right now, the preset that I have set is to default. But let's go to, um, I would never recommend to use high fidelity photo. It breaks it down into too many shapes. Um, even a low fidelity photo, it will break it down into tons of little bitty shapes. Um, I might go as up as high as maybe um, six colors. And you'll notice that they have other settings. Um, if you have a sketch of a logo or a photograph of a logo that somebody gives you and you want to trace it and to turn it into um, a vector graphic. And that's what it's done with this. <coughs> this um, has a lot of the detail 
So let's go ahead and turn this back on. But it's, you know, changed the colors considerably. They're not as bright. Um, you can see that um, not everything looks the way that the original image does, but it's, um, it's interesting. It gives me a lot of detail and it gives me a start to how to uh, complete this. So maybe what I want to do with it is if I select it, what it does is that it brings it in as a, as a grouped object. So maybe what I want to do is expand that. And now you can see with all the little blue lines in here, since we're on one layer, all the separate shapes that it makes. So what I can do, they're still grouped. So what I need to do to be able to, to utilize these shapes individually and do a little bit more interesting things with them is I need to, I probably should copy the whole layer again, just so that I can always go back. I'm not gonna do that for today's demonstration though. So what you can do is you can go to edit and you can say that you want to ungroup. Um, no, sorry, it's under object, object, ungroup. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the background layer and I'm going to delete it. So that leaves that. I don't have that anymore. If I want, I could go into this layer and instead of deleting it, I could have turned it off and locked it instead. Maybe what I wanna do instead though, is I wanna take this layer back here. Now you'll notice what this has done. It's taken and it's broken it down into lots of little bitty shapes. <clears throat> Um, so you can go back and group them together. That wouldn't be a bad idea. And then you could go ahead and you could, um, <clears throat> um, once they're grouped together, you, there's a tool that we can use that allows us to um, join them together into a final shape. Or you can just, a, a better way of doing this may, might be, let me go ahead and lock this for the time being. I'm on top of this layer, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a brand new layer. And instead of these little bitty broken shapes back here, maybe I just want a solid shape. So what I'll do is I'll use the, <clears throat> um, the ellipse tool, try to find the center, hold down option, shift, and click from here and pull it out. And I'm gonna also hold down the space bar to recenter it and then pull it out a little bit. We'll recenter it again, make it nice, good size, maybe a little bit bigger than what I had before. And now I'm gonna release the mouse. So I have a nice clean circular shape. And now what I can do is I can move it behind the shape, the, the group of shapes that I have right now so it's behind it, but now what I can do is I can take these other shapes from the, un I'll go back and I'll unlock this layer and I'll start to select the individual shapes that it's created here and I'll delete them, okay? So I have, I've cleaned it up a little bit and we can go ahead and this one, let's see what this is. Okay, see, this is another one that it's subdivided into another group. So I need to handle that differently. Okay, so I've cleaned it up a little bit, but I can also use it as a guide. I, you can, I can use elements of it to bring forward or um, into a new illustration. I can also isolate them and ungroup um, parts of it and, um, as I said, join them together. So let me um, go back a couple of steps to see what all of this looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna start to turn some of these off and see if I can't group some of these together in a different manner. So for example, I wanna take, and you can see that this shape here, let's go ahead and twirl down see which one is selected, and I'm going to take this layer and lock it. I'm gonna select these, maybe that's the wrong one. So let's go back. Um, 
let's turn that off. Let's turn, unlock this one. There we go. That's the one that I want. Let's unlock, let's lock these others. No, no, no. Pardon me. I don't want to lock all of that. I want to lock the layers beneath. See all the shapes that it's created? This is really daunting. It's, it's overwhelming. And you don't want to work with that many shapes. But so you might want to work with it. It's great for working with a simple drawing, as I said, like a logo or something where you have fewer shapes. But it does offer up some, some nice opportunities for us. So another thing that we can do with this is that once you have created an outline of all these shapes, I can select all of them by clicking and dragging around that. That was done in that last exercise. And now what I can do is I can bring up this little, I can recolor the artwork here. And I can bring this up and there's a variety of ways that we can do this. This is in a little, in a different lesson, but I thought it would be worthwhile showing you now. So we can um, rearrange colors or I can take the colors that I see here and there's six of them. I can use one of the primary colors and I can move it around the color wheel. And you'll notice that it recolors the whole thing in their um, original relationship to one another. So it's a great way of creating different color options or variations. And it's hard to tell sometimes which one you want um, and which one you don't want. But my recommendation is to save many of them and go back and then you have options. It's pretty typical in commercial art to have several options available to you um, or to the client. I and mean, they're not going to want to, you know, be able, they're not going to be able to make up their mind. So you'll give them maybe three different options. Okay. So I can do that. I can reset it. So it goes back to the original one. And then I can go ahead and close it. But that's an option for you too. So this gives us a, a start with this. Um, again, you can also um, take elements from this. Let's take this and delete it. Okay, and let's go ahead and take these other elements. See, they're all little tiny shapes. So maybe I don't wanna remove that, but let's go ahead and take another piece from here. And let's remove that. Let's remove this. And let's see what shapes I have available here. I'll go ahead and make sure that they're removed. I'm trying to remove the easy ones just to show you what we can do. And then once they're removed, I can go back to layers and I can um, go ahead and close up this one. And I can turn on the background image. So I have more of a photographic element in addition to the stylized drawings that I've been working on. So you can combine photo photographs and your drawn images. Um, I would not rely on just the scanned image and that's it. Um, you can run into a lot of problems with that. Although <clears throat> having said that, there are instances that you may um, encounter uh, with clients that that would be a fast way of turning a photograph into um, an interesting graphic. This doesn't work entirely. For example, these little triangle patterns out here, I would want to see them all the way around and they really get lost in the very end here. So I would want to take that and remove it <clears throat> and build my own. But at least I have a starting point for it all. So that's the um, image traced feature. Okay. Do any of you have any questions about that? Yes, no? No? So that will give you a head start into um, building your mask. And it's very useful for you know just about any kind of assignment. I think some of the <clears throat> 
the best illustrations that I've seen are the most interesting are ones that combine um, traced photo photographs with um, hand-drawn elements as well. So you get a nice um, balance or contrast of textures and line quality and that sort of thing. They really look good. So you might want to experiment since there isn't any one way of doing any of these. Um, again, go back to the samples that I have on my website from previous students' work, and um, you'll see there isn't any one way to do any of these. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one. I'm going to create a new file. <clears throat> Since there aren't any questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and start by going over the lessons and showing you basically how to create your objects. You already should have covered in the in uh, previous tutorial um, how to select objects and how to move them and how to deselect them. There's a variety of ways of doing that, okay? And how you make objects. We have typically what works nicely is to start from your basic objects over here to the left, okay? And there's a variety of ways that you could do that. If I select the ellipse tool, I can click and drag diagonally. And the thing that's nice about Illustrator is that if I decide, you know, I want it to be a horizontal <clears throat> ellipse and I change my mind, later on, I can go ahead and I can click and I can click it and I can drag it and I can make it a perfect circle or I can make it a vertical ellipse. You can edit these to your heart's content. <clears throat> With the circle or the ellipse tool, there's also a nice feature that allows you to, <clears throat> because it's a live tool, and get, make my little um, Pac-Man shape here, okay? With a little piece of pie, you know, a little slice cut out of it. So that's one way of doing that, okay? And again, you can always go back and you can edit and you can change it. Nothing's permanent. If you want a specific size for your shape, um, again, you can click and drag, whoops, make sure that you select the tool. You can click and drag. And as you're doing that, if you have smart guides on, you can see in the lower right-hand corner in the little gray box, um, it's really small probably for all of you to see, but it will give you the width and the height. If you wanna constrain proportions, you hold down the shift key. And again, if you want to make the shape from the center outward, you hold down the shift um, and the option key. And you can see that it is a perfect circle. It shows you the center point. And um, again, in the lower right hand corner, it gives you the, the size. In addition to that, though, if we go to the right and we look at the properties panel, I'm going to go ahead and um, change the fill color of this just so that maybe you can see this a little bit better a nice bright red or something okay let's use the move tool move it in place now if i want this to be a different size in a different position and you want to be very precise about it most of the time when i do my illustrations i'm not that precise um, there are times, though, when I'm working on other projects where it is really essential that I be precise. So it's good to know that you have these options available to you. <clears throat> if you want to, to transform your object, you can do that up here in the properties panel. You see where my um, um, arrow is, I'm circling it. Now, there's a little widget to the left, and it has a total of nine points. So if I want to resize my object from the center, I can do that. If I want to resize it from the left hand, bottom left-hand corner or the top center, I can do that. Right now, the measurement is in points. So I'm going to switch back to um, inches. So I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to go to units. And I'm going to switch from um, general. I'm going to switch to inches. Um, leave strokes in type and points. That's a customary um, measurement for those, um, those types of things. 
So now you can see that it's three and a quarter by three and a quarter inches. What if I decide, you know what, I want this to be um, five inches. I just type in five, go ahead and make sure that it's um, linked to one another and hit tab key, whoops, let's go back again. Let's bring that back. Let me undo that. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that these are linked. And that's what this little tool is to the right, hit five. There you go, and five, and it, it's a perfect circle. Perfect. If you wanna change the placement of it, remember I said we can go to this little widget here, and that will also determine where it's sized and where it's placed. So let's say I wanna move this to the upper left-hand corner and I want it to be exactly one inch away from the left and maybe a half inch away from the top. Well, what I can do is I can bring up rulers, that's Command R, so I can see where it is, where everything is located. <clears throat> and you can see from the left here, here is zero, zero, right in the upper left-hand corner. So now what I do, I said I wanted from the left, I wanted it to be one inch. And from the top, I want it to be a half an inch. So I'll put in 0.5 inches, everything is done in decimals. And there you go. It's exactly placed half inch from the top, one inch over from the left. And again, that was based on the upper left-hand corner. If I want it centered, and I wanna make sure that it is exactly in the middle of this, of my document, I can go ahead and since this is, you know, eight and a half by 11, I want it 4.25 over from the left. I want it five and a half inches from the top. This is exactly centered in your document. And when the object is selected, you'll notice that you have a little <clears throat> mark that tells you um, the center of the object. And even when you don't have it selected, as long as, as long as you have smart guides on, as you move over it, you'll see that little cross here. And these can be really effective in duplicating objects and making um, uh, repetition of objects, that sort of thing that are concentric or that you know you do other things with them so that's you know basic guide in you know starting with a circle the same is true for some other tools like if i want the rectangle tool i'll click and i'll drag there we have some really nice additional features though in this so let me zoom in on this a little bit so again you can use you know, this device to determine the cent where you want it located and the size of this. So let's say I want it exactly four by four inches. So I'll go ahead and I'll put in four and we'll go ahead and make it four. Whoops, I have a original. So I'm not, I don't want the original proportions. I want it to be changed. There we go. So now it's four by four. One. No, it doesn't want to do that, huh? Well, oh well. Probably might be easier just to make it again, but I'm going to leave it as is. So we have our object that we can always click on the handles and resize. Okay, you can link, you know, size them from the top sides or diagonally. Then in addition to that, you'll notice that there are these little dots inside each corner. So if you wanna create um, a rectangle with radial corners, you just simply click and you can drag on that. And notice that initially they are all joined together, but they don't have to be. We can come back up here I got to find out where this is located again. I'm going to click here under these properties. This little, these little three little dots to the right, it gives us additional properties here. Right now, each of the corners are linked to one another. So I can specify um, 
one each corner to be different from one another. Okay, I can also decide, you know what, I want the upper left hand corner to be indented. I want the upper um, right hand corner to be indented. And maybe I want the lower right hand corner to be kind of chiseled off. And again, each of these now allow us to resize them uniformly, or I can come back over here and again, bring this up again. Whoops, cancel that. I'm sorry. Bring this up again. Oh, come on. I don't want that. I want this shape. And I want these. No, 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 no. Oh, wrong button. My bad. Close that. It's this one up here. And I can deselect link and I can make them all different. You can scale corners if you wish as you resize it. Right now, they're remaining the same. So as I resize this, notice that they will all now get smaller and bigger as I make it. So it's up to you. Um, there's lots of ways of tweaking the shapes in here. Lots and lots and lots of ways. Okay. So um, the properties panel will be your friend for sizing, for customizing all of your shapes. And as well as uh, say they build a lot of redundancy in here, I can change the fill and stroke color properties from the upper left hand corner in the options menu. I can do that in the lower left hand corner with the fill and the stroke down here. And I can do the same over here um, in the properties panel. So if I decide later on while it's um, selected, if I would rather have it blue, then it's blue. Okay. So that's one way, another way of making shapes and working with rectangles and squares and that sort of thing. So let me zoom out a little bit and let's resize this to get this in a different place. So some other tools that we have available to us. These are just our basic tools. Um, let's work with the polygon and the star tool. Okay, so let's work with a polygon tool. And the polygon tool and the star tool are very similar to one another. But if I select the polygon tool and I click and I drag, okay, I want to do it from the center outward. Click and I drag. Okay, it's by default um, a hexagon or, yeah, hexagon. Do that again. Holding down the option key to do this from the center. Now, if I want more sides, I can hit the up arrow in the lower right hand corner of my keyboard. If I want fewer sides, I hit the down arrow until I get a triangle. Can't have any less than that. Okay, so that's how that works. The up and down arrows. Now, in addition to that, as I said, what's very similar to that is if let's say we go ahead and we want to use um, instead of the polygon tool, we want to use the star tool. When I click and I drag on that, notice that by default, I get kind of a cowboy five pointed star. If I want more star, more points, then again, I hit the up or the down arrow. In addition to that, we have an inner circle and an outer circle that defines the kind of shape that we have. If I hold down the control key, no, sorry, option key. There we go. I want the command key. I forget which is which and I pull on it, notice that I get a really, the interior um, circle remains or circumference remains the same and the outer one gets larger. And when I pull it in, I get a very subtle, um, you know, the outer and inner circumferences are almost identical to one another. So that's how you do that. And then again, if you want to 
add points or remove points, create little star shapes or whatever you want. Um, the same is true. Okay, so that's the option or the command key to do that. And you can only do that while you're making the shape. Okay. So again, I'll go ahead and I'll reduce the size of this. The next thing that I wanted to cover today is to show you, um, and I, it's probably, yeah, I believe it's in the lesson three or four, um, is the, the shape um, builder tool. This is one of my favorite, favorite tools. So let's say I wanted to combine these two shapes into something really unique, okay? And otherwise it would be difficult to make those shapes, make this final shape by itself. Well, if I hold down the shift key and I select both of them and I select the shape builder tool, I can now, you'll notice that when I go over these, they kind of highlight a little um, screen if I click and I drag across them, they are now one, this is now one shape that's been combined together. So now if I hit Command Y to turn off the, the preview, you can see that I have a single shape now. So this would be an excellent tool for you guys to use when you're building your mask. You can start with um, some very basic shapes and then use the shape builder tool to combine them into one. Okay, that's what I would recommend. Now, there's other things that we can do with this too. Let's go ahead and command Y, turn that back off. Let's go ahead and I'll take um, some other shapes here. I'm gonna zoom out. And let's do this again. So let's say I want to poke a hole in an object or I want to cut a piece of it out. Well, the same thing can be said for the, we can do the same thing. Not only can you join them together, but you can remove parts of them. So for example, if I go ahead and I select both of these shapes again, and I select the um, shape builder tool, if I hold down the option key now and I click and I drag across, it cuts it away. Um, again, very, very powerful tool. If I just hover over this middle shape and hold down the option key and click, notice that it creates a combined shape, but it removes that. So now if I select one of these here, I put it in here and I send it to the back or send it to the back, you'll see that it is hollow. It's not a white shape. So I'll go ahead and go to option or um, option transform. Um, now arrange, I want to send to back. And now it's behind. And if I select this shape again, well, let's make it a different color, maybe an orange. You can see how we can create some very complex shapes in really short order. Um, it, it, as I said, it's one of my favorite, favorite tools. It is so powerful. Now, in addition to that, something that you might use, it's down the road. But I think it's useful to cover it today since pretty soon you'll be using the, um, there we go, and they're all separate shapes right now. Now, what you may wanna do is if I undo that, is I can combine them together or probably, I sh should probably group them together. So if I select them all like so, now I can hit Command G to group and now they all behave as one. But there are separate shapes that can be controlled individually in layers because you can see that with this shape selected, it is um, a group. And then when I twirl down, you can see that I can select them individually if I wish, and I can edit them within that group. <coughs> in addition to that, we have the stroke width tool that this is also be, would also be a really useful tool for you in um, working with your mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create just a simple straight line here. Okay, that's it. 
And I'm going to make it a little bit fatter just so everybody can see what I'm doing here. Now, to vary the width of this, I mean, it, it's a very mechanical, um, straightforward um, path, but maybe I want to create some interest to that. So what I could do is if I use the shape, um, the, the width tool here, I can come over this in any one of these points and I can click and I can drag and change the width of this. I can click here and I can click down here and I can make this wider. Now this is still a path. So if I go, to, you'll notice that there is no fill over here with this selected, but I can come in here and I can change the color of the path. Now, if I want to change the path to be um, both, to have both a stroke and a fill, I can do that. I can go ahead and I can select the path and I can go to object. Um, let's see, let me make sure that I'm here. Let's go to object and I can go to um, shape and I can say, um, I'm gonna go ahead and expand shape. No, let's go ahead and let me undo that. Let's go ahead and select that again. And let's go ahead and select it. I want to outline path is what I wanna do. I wanna go ahead and go to object, path, outline stroke. That's what I wanted. So now this is in fact um, a, a shape that has both the attributes of a fill and a stroke. And you can see that I have those here now. I can go ahead and I can change the fill, make it red. I can go ahead and I can change the stroke. Let's make it black. And then I can go ahead and increase the width. So I've created a very complex shape by doing nothing more than using a path and using um, the stroke width tool. Um, again, these are, are fairly recent iterations. Um, you know, additions to the um, to Illustrator that I think make it extremely powerful, really, really powerful. That's pretty much um, <clears throat> everything that I wanted to cover today. Um, you can use the rounded rectangle tool. It's really kind of pointless. Um, you know, we can go ahead and it's really just a variation on the rectangle tool. Um, you can also use the ellipse tool. That's kind of a, a variation on this circle tool. Okay. Um, and then later this semester, we're going to get into the pen tool, which makes it really, really complicated and the curvature tool but I'm not gonna cover that today. So um, any questions about what I'm covering today about different approaches that you can take to the mask using image trace, as well as create your own individual shapes and different ways of using both the properties panel and the basic tools to start with simple shapes and create much more complex shapes when you're done. Um, and then you can combine them together, subtract, do all sorts of things. But if you think of it, um, your mask is sort of a 3D puzzle. Um, you will get into um, various options for yourself and the more um, uh, complex your mask becomes, um, you'll find that many of these tools will be useful to you. Um, is there, as I said, is there any one way of doing these? No. Um, you can do it any number of different ways. Okay. So um, I'm pretty much done, unless you guys have questions. And we can call it a day. Um, have a good weekend. And we'll cover more tools on Tuesday. Um, if, what I would appreciate, though, for those of you who have started your mask, if you would care to share them, you can share them privately if you want, but to be able to give you some feedback on them, that would be ideal. Um, kind of nudge you in a direction that I think would be probably make it stronger 
not that maybe what you're doing is bad, but make a, a you know make your image stronger. Um, again, they can be fairly complex. Um, they can, if they are simple, they should be. <clears throat> um, designed in the manner that sort of uh, Charles did. Where is his? Or it's Charles, I think. Now, that was done a lot with brushes. But again, it's all kind of experimentation. This is Charles. A very simple mask, but then cutting it up into, you know, in the smaller shapes and working with the design so it becomes a strong design. Although it is a mask, it, it's really taking a lot of liberties with it. Okay, so look at the samples, go online and look at samples of other things that are done with, um, you know, other people's work that are done in Illustrator. Practice with the tools and um, do something amazing, okay? That's it, um, unless you have questions, no? So I'm gonna say goodbye, okie doke. Pause my recording.